but the whole time I'm wishing it was you instead. Ugh, gut wrenching. The way it really hits you right in the chest, and we know it's about John Mayer, right? Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. That was super sweet of you. I really like the little hairstyle I've got going on here, you guys. I saw somebody on TikTok a couple weeks ago that had thinner hair like I do. I know I'd, it can be kind of misleading because I've got curls and I've got a lot of hair, but it is pretty thin. So like space buns and fun little hairstyles like that do not typically function super well on me just because I don't have a lot of hair to put into two separate buns. Anyways, I'm rambling already, but I saw someone on TikTok do it with clips who had thin hair. I couldn't find any matching clips, but I still feel like it looks cute. It's giving volume. It's giving very regal energy, especially with my little headband too. And I just feel so, so cute. But that's not what this video is about. You did not click on this video to see my cutie little hairstyles. No, you clicked on this video because you, like me, have an interest in me doing a makeup look inspired by Speak Now by Taylor Swift. This is my makeup and music series where I talk about some of my favorite albums. Right now I'm going through all of the Taylor Swift eras in anticipation of the eras tour, which I'm going to in May, and I'm going to be rocking it out in the nosebleeds. I'm so, so excited. But also in these videos, I like to talk about my top five songs on the album. When I originally created this concept, makeup and music, or had the idea for it, I was like, ooh, I'll rate the whole albums. Like, I'll list the whole album from least to most favorite songs. And then that really stressed me out because I, I love all of them, you know? I don't think there's a single Taylor Swift song that I'm like, oh, this stinks. Well, <laughs> maybe ours, but you know, that's not her fault. Things change. Ah. Anyways, we're going to be doing a top five. I'm going to be telling you why they're in my top five and why they are where they are. And I'm just so freaking excited. So if that sounds like a topic that is interesting to you and you love Speak Now and want to manifest a, a quicker Taylor's version with me, maybe with this video, then I encourage you to please subscribe and keep on watching because it's coming at you right now. All right, before I get to ranting and raving about all my favorite songs on Speak Now. Let me give you a bit of a rundown for the plan for the look today. Obviously, Speak Now, the album, has lots of purples in it. It's the purple album. So, of course, I'm going to be dipping into my Blend Bunny Blends palette, and I want to do purple all over the lids, but then I also want to go in with some of my water-activated liners. You can see, well, no, you can't. I got to hold it this way. You can see I've got some purple water-activated liners. I've got some purples in here, and I want to do lots of detail work. I'm going to put fireworks on my eyes and I, if you know, you know why. So yeah, that is the plan. Now let's just get to it. So starting off with the mid-tone kind of, I'd say that's more of a deeper purple, not the deepest purple in the Blend Bunny Blends palette, but we're going to start off with this mid-tone purple and I'm going to pop that all over my lid and then after I'll blend it out with a lighter purple. But okay, so let's get right into my top five. My number five song on Speak Now is is enchanted. If you saw my last video where I was talking about Lover and talking about what a hopeless romantic I am, I feel like then you're probably not surprised by Enchanted being in my top five. And I think I especially have a special place in my heart for this song because I remember being a teenager and singing to this song in my room. So when Speak Now came out in 2010, I believe was the year it came out, I was a freshman to sophomore in high school. I don't remember if it came out when I was a freshman or a sophomore, but I was like very young and in high school and had never dated a boy before but had many boys who I had crushes on, who I had texting situations with, who I wanted to like me, who were only just friends and every time I would come home from hanging out with them or there's really only like one at a time. It's, I'm talking like I had like lots of boys I liked at the same time and it, if you did, good for you. I love that journey for you but I, you know, my, my flavor of the month, whoever I was liking at the time, after I would hang out with them in a group, always never alone, I would come home and I would put on Enchanted and dance around my room because that is just how I felt. It just reminds me of young love and the excitement that you feel when you first start liking someone and getting to know everything about them. It is just such a good feeling. I'm going to dip into a deeper shade of purple real quick just to smoke out that 
outer corner. But yeah, literally the word enchanted itself just makes you think of fairy tales and princesses meeting someone at the ball. And you know, I freaking love stuff like that now, but especially when I was a teenager too, like I really did think of love is like a fairy tale. I mean, how can you not when it's something you haven't experienced yet? Fairy tales, for all intents and purposes, are make-believe, so you kind of have to fill in the blanks on your own, and that's how young love like felt to me, and that's what it feels like in this song, where you're like, she's weaving this whole story where she says, this is me praying that this is the very first page, not where the storyline ends. My thoughts will echo your name until I see you again. Like, it's so beautiful how she's literally speaking this whole song like it's a fairy tale, like it's a story, and I just think it's so beautiful, and she's so excited. There's so much joy in the hope. Like, you know what that moment feels like when you met someone for the first time, and you feel yourself falling. Even if it's not in love yet, you feel yourself falling in infatuation with them, and you go home, and it's like, wow. Like, at least I think that's the sign of like really liking someone. If you're not feeling like that when you get home and you just feel like, eh, whatever, then you know, that's maybe, maybe you guys should just be friends. I don't know. Let me stop myself here and not try to give relationship advice. <laughs> All right, let me grab a crease brush real quick and dip into this pastel purple and honestly a little bit of white so I can blow out this shape a bit. But yeah, like I was saying, that feeling is just so special when you like somebody so much and you just, you immediately start thinking about the future. I've always done this with people that I liked. <laughs> I dated this boy my sophomore year of high school, it's, it's loosely using the word date. We went on one solo date and a couple of group dates before he broke up with me because his parents were going through a divorce and he was having a hard time. Um, so I was not very understanding of that either. I was like, how dare you break up with me for this reason? Anyways, but I remember when I first found out through his friend that he liked me and wanted to like go out with me or wanted to like you know, he thought I was cute or whatever. I was like, what? And I would spend all day in math class in my freaking Algebra 2 class daydreaming about him taking me to his prom and what I would wear and how we would dance and how he would treat me. I did not do very well in math that semester. I had to transfer to a lower class. <laughs> Sorry if you're watching this, mom. I really did try my best in that math class. You know I tried my best. I stayed after and everything. But anyways, like, I just could not stop myself from daydreaming like that when I liked a boy or there was a prospect of a new romance or if I knew somebody liked me too like and I think that's another thing that's so beautiful about Enchanted is she's like please don't be in love with someone else please don't have somebody waiting for you like please let it be me I think that's also very beautiful too with her situation is you know she had this night of infatuation with this person who she liked but she doesn't even know if he's available. So she's singing all of this the whole time and there's there's kind of some pain in the song too of being like, please don't be in love with someone else. Got a lot of layers to this song, you know? I know everyone kind of like made fun of this song on Tumblr back in the day because they found out it was written by the guy from Owl City and they were like, really, that guy? But like, hey, he was cute, I get it. But um, it's a beautiful song. I really love Enchanted. It's worthy of being my number five. I am literally so excited for her to re-record these songs as an adult. I think it's gonna be so cathartic for her, but also wonderful for us to get to listen to, and I just couldn't be more excited. Anyways, let's talk about my number four on Speak Now, which is Haunted. All right, I just went and listened to it. I needed a, I needed a refresher on the lyrics so I could talk through how deeply I love this song, dipping into my Glisten Shapeshifter palette in the shade Bewitched so I can add a little purple sparkle. Just to the brow bone, though, because we got, we got a lot to do with water-activated liners. Anyways, Haunted is such a beautifully haunting song, for lack of a better word. I mean, come on, the song's called Haunted. It's about feeling haunted by a past lover who hurts you, but it also is haunting. It's so musically beautiful. The orchestra music is just phenomenal. But what an absolutely beautiful song, especially the line I think is the most powerful that just ugh, hits me every time. He can try to take away my pain and he just might make me smile but the whole time I'm wishing it was you instead. 
ugh, gut-wrenching, absolutely gut-wrenching, literally talking about how this guy was bad for her. She knows, he was bad for her. He left her high and dry, literally left her out to the woods by herself, but she still can't get over him, and she still feels this attachment to be like, I could literally find this wonderful guy who makes me smile and makes me happy, but I'm still wishing it was you, who only made me sad, who only left me feeling haunted by you after you're gone. Ooh. Oh, the way it really hits you right in the chest. We know it's about John Mayer, right? That old SOB, we, no thanks to me. Not, not in this house. Bert, isn't that right, Bert? He's napping. All right, dipping into my little Glisten Cosmetics BYOP palette. I made this myself. I customized it myself. Glisten made the liners and I put them together. But anyways, I'm gonna dip into this light purple shade and start doing some fireworks. Do you wanna do the liner first? No, it's okay. I'm gonna do a wing too, but let me do my fireworks first. Okay, so haunted. You and I, walk a fragile line. I have known it all this time, but I never thought I'd live to see it break. Ugh, gut-wrenching. I know I'm gonna use that term too much in this video, but it is so powerful. She admits that she knew that this relationship was fragile the whole time, but she still never thought it would break, which is just like, oh my gosh. It's getting dark and it's all too quiet and I can't trust anything now, and it's coming over you like it's all a big mistake. Oof, I mean, right to the chest there. I mean, we all know, if you're unfamiliar with Taylor Swift and John Mayer's relationship at all, they dated when she was 19 and he was 32 so yeah a bit of a yikes um and when she has that line that says it's coming over you like it's all a big mistake like to me that implies his realization of like oh i never should have dated this child i know she's not technically legally a child at that point but maybe i shouldn't have dated this teenager john mayer john mayer is thinking and just how powerful of her to then write a song about like it's coming over you like it's all a big mistake and we know later she goes Goes on later in the album goes on to write a bit more of a, a tear apart song but I just love the visuals of the song Haunted and uh, talking about how he literally left her out in the woods he left her out in the cold and the whole song is her saying come on come on don't leave me like this I thought we had this figured out something's gone terribly wrong you're all I wanted there's such desperation in the music and I just think it really shows you what it feels like to go through a breakup where you knew deep down it probably wasn't the right fit this probably wasn't the person you were gonna go be with forever but still when they break your heart it still hurts so freaking bad. It's such a like panicky feeling to, to be broken up with or to break up with someone who you really wanted it to work out with so badly even though you knew it wasn't gonna work out because maybe this person's not a good person or at least not the right person for you. And it just, it makes you feel crazy. But you know, I, I think this is a very cathartic song to sing when you're going through a breakup and I hope it was cathartic for her to write because it is just absolutely beautiful. Like I said, the music is beautiful too. I have to stop talking about all of the songs for so freaking long, but go listen to Haunted Now. It's a beautiful song and worthy of being number four. All right, let's move on to my number three song on Speak Now, which is The Story of Us. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I literally just made a post on Friday where I said The Story of Us was my favorite song on Speak Now. And I told you on that post that my favorites are rapidly changing. And I meant that because it is different today. But anyway, so the story of us is still worthy of being very high up there on my list and being number three because talk about a masterclass in storytelling. I know it's right in the name. She really gives us what the song is going to be about. She's very good at naming songs. But the story of us is just such a masterclass in storytelling about a relationship and another one filled with a bunch of gut-wrenching lyrics, but also a snappy little beat. I also feel like coming from Haunted, there is even more catharsis in story of us because in Haunted, she's kind of still got that desperation in her voice where she's saying, come on, come on, don't leave me like this. Don't leave me. Something's gone terribly wrong. Whereas the story of us, she's, you know, still commenting on the relationship. She has this one line where she says, this is looking like a contest of who can act like they care less, talking about when her and John Mayer like would see each other after they broke up. And she says, but I liked it better when you were on my side. But I feel like that's more of like a subjective view of the situation, you know? Like she's able to come through it with a little more thought behind it. I don't know when this song 
song was written, but I feel like Story of S was written after Haunted. You know, if we're to assume that she's going through the breakup in this order, then I would assume Story of Us is written afterwards because it's literally her closing the chapter on that relationship. Taylor also references a very specific event in this song where I don't remember what award show it was, but basically it was like the first award show that Taylor and John Mayer had both run into each other at since they broke up and he like slighted her. He like barely said hi to her. She like went over and like tried to like be the bigger person and like say hi to him and he's just super awkward. There's video footage of it. It's like, ugh, sir, you are an adult. Like, ugh. I just, I hate him. I really, I hate the strong word, but I hate him. So anyways, she writes about that event and talks about how like, this is looking like a contest of who can act like they care less, but I liked it better when you were on my side. And there's another line where she says, but you held your pride like you should have held me. Like talking about how he's just so prideful and just so, he really wanted to just slip out of this relationship like it was nothing. And she's not gonna let that happen. She's gonna call it out for what it was, call it out for what it was and call it out for the something that it was. But I do still think she gets a good amount of catharsis in this song because she says the story of us looks a lot like a tragedy now, the end or next chapter. She says next chapter at one point, she says the end later, but she's moving on from it. You know, she said, I'm going to, I'm going to sing about it. I'm absolutely going to sing about it and not let you wash this relationship away, John Mayer, sir. I'm going to, I'm going to sing about it, but then she's going to move on. Then she's going to say next chapter, close the book, but it won't really be close the book because she will write other songs about him later. But you know, that's, that's wait for midnights for that. <laughs> All right. I went ahead and added some rhinestones to the middle of my fireworks just to give them a little bit of extra sparkle. I feel like they look kind of messy up close, but I mean, from a distance, you get the picture, right? Anyways, moving on to foundation. We're gonna do some more purple touches to it. I think I'm gonna do a red lip because she wears a red lip on the Speak Now tour, which is like so fun. Anyways, let's talk about my number two song off of Speak Now, which is Mean. Oh my gosh, Mean got me through some stuff, dude. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Speak Now came out when I was in fresh, I was either a freshman or a sophomore in high school. I was both in middle school and a, a little bit continuing into high school. I don't know. I kind of had like, I had a best friend that turned out to not be a best friend. I think we've all been there, but yeah. So the song Mean really helped me to get through that quite a bit. It was a really good message for a, a young teenager like myself to hear. And I really do feel like the song Mean had a very profound effect on my upbringing because I, I get some mean Instagram comments, you know. I am very fortunate. I have a good amount of followers on Instagram and I've had quite a few videos go viral or get like a lot of views. And you know, it's just inevitable when that happens, you're gonna get some people who just wanna be mean to be mean. And a lot of times I don't respond, but usually if I do respond, I try to respond with kindness and give them the benefit of the doubt and say like, oh, I'm so sorry you felt like you had to say that, but sending you lots of love as always. And sometimes people will ask me like, why don't you just be mean back to them? And I'm always like, because in the words of Taylor Swift, someday I'll be big enough so they can't hit me. And all they're ever going to be is mean. Someday I'll be living in a big old city. I already am. And all they're ever going to be is mean. Like, I'm not going to be mean back. And she even has that part in the song where she says, I bet you got pushed around. Somebody made you small, but the cycle ends right now because you can't lead me down that road. Talking about how, yeah, she could be mean back to the person that was mean to her, but she's gonna stop the cycle. And I think there's nothing more empowering than that to say, you know, I know I could be mean back to this person. I absolutely could roast them and come up with something really witty. I always tell people as a Virgo, I could be very mean. It's very easy for us Virgos to come up with witty comebacks to things that people say, but I don't wanna go down that road and I wanna stop the cycle. I don't wanna have a fight with somebody and just throw mean phrases back and forth at each other. You know, if we can have this interaction interaction end with only one person being mean, I'm still happy with that interaction and I know that I couldn't be dragged down to that level. So mean really did have a very profound effect on me. I love that song. All right, y'all, I'm pulling out the purple blush. We're going purple on purple today. This is the About Face Beauty Score Blush, my absolute favorite purple blush. It's so pretty. But anyways, let's talk about my number one favorite song off of Speak Now. I'll give you one more moment to guess. What do you think my number one favorite? 
favorite song on Speak Now is It's Dear John. Clearly, I have an affinity for gut-wrenching lyrics. I have an affinity for songs where Taylor Swift bears her absolute heart and soul to us. So how could I not choose Dear John as my favorite song? Obviously, what inspired Dear John? You know, the whole situation is not a situation that I'm happy happened. I'm very sad that Taylor Swift had to go through such a horrible time with that, but I'm so happy that she was able to turn it into a song as beautiful as Dear John that will then go on to help so many other people realize that they are in bad relationships. So, you know, like, if there's one positive thing to focus on out of that whole relationship, it's that hopefully she could help some other people. Also, is the eye look making more sense to you now? Shining like fireworks over your sad, empty town? Hell yeah, that was the concept. <laughs> ah, all right, hello. I had to go do a couple things. I promise I will get better at, like, timing out <laughs> makeup looks as I talk. But anyways, we were talking about how Dear John is my favorite song on Speak Now. And that's just because she absolutely owned him with this song. Like, li so lyrically genius. You are an expert at sorry and keeping lines blurry. Never impressed by me acing your tests. All the girls that you ran dry have dull, lifeless eyes because you burned them out. But I took your matches before fire could catch me, so don't look now. I'm shining like fireworks over your sad, empty town. Oh, my God. What a freaking mic drop moment, but she doesn't drop the mic. She goes, over your sad empty town. And it's so beautiful and the fireworks go off. If you've ever watched the Speak Now tour, it is available in full on YouTube. I will link it down below because <laughs> I have watched it and it's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. I feel like I could just sit here and say all of the lyrics to you, but that one really is my favorite. I took your matches before fire could catch me, so don't look now. I'm shining like fireworks over your sad, empty town. How freaking beautiful and like the most cathartic of all of her songs. You can tell this the freedom you feel by the end of the song because the beginning is sad. Long were the nights where my days once revolved around you, counting my footsteps, playing praying the floor won't fall through again. Like, ooh, recounting the pain being in the relationship. So then like going from that at the beginning, talking about how painful it was, she was always walking on eggshells with him and then getting to the end of the song where she said, you should have known I was too young to be messed with. The girl with the dress cried the whole way home. You should have known, literally the seedling for would have, could have, should have. This is the first time she tells him, this is what you should have done. Whereas like in all of the other songs have lines that basically say like, come back to me at some point. In Haunted, she says, something went terribly wrong, you're all I wanted. And then in Story of Us, she says, but I'd lay my armor down if you said you'd rather love than fight. So like both of those songs, there's still a part of her that's like, but I would get back together if you would be better. But then you have this beautiful song, Dear John, where she's like, this song is to let you know why we are never getting back together. Like, ever. Just kidding. That's from Red. That's another album. But, like, this is literally her Dear John letter. If you don't know, Dear John letters are a thing where, like, people used to write off to their spouses or boyfriends at war being like, don't look for me when you come back. We are breaking up. I think that's a summary. <laughs> and he had the nerve to try to take Taylor Swift to court over this and say, it, like, sue her for defamation or something like that. And they literally got laughed out of court. They were like, no. You, just because your name is John and the song says, Dear John, no, 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 does not correlate. And then the day she won that case or he lost his case, she literally had Carly Simon come on tour and sing You're So Vain with her. What a petty queen. We absolutely love it. I wouldn't even call that petty. I'd just call that incredible. So yeah, Dear John, my favorite song. I cross all of my fingers and toes that she sings it at the Eros tour. I know that like, I don't think she did in the first couple ones, but that doesn't mean she can't sing it in New York. So. Which, cross your fingers for me. I did not have the best application of this red lip, but I'm absolutely in love with this color. This is the Bichette Lippy Sticks from ColourPop. First of all, it smells like Cadbury Mini Eggs, which if you know me, you know that is like my favorite candy in the whole world. So love that about it, but it's also just a really pretty tone. I feel like this is very flattering on my cool undertones. I've been learning more about color theory and like what tones flatter your skin lately. So I, according to color theory, this is a good red for me. And according to me, it's a good red for me, so I love it. All right, my cute and sweet friends, what do you think of my finished Speak Now look? I feel 
cute as hell, cute as ever. I love the way it turned out. Like I mentioned earlier, I know my fireworks aren't like the cleanest in the whole world, but I feel like from back here, they look fine. Even from up here, I feel like they look fine too. I feel like we figured it out. I like my little rhinestones to make the fireworks look more sparkly, but also my little rhinestone homage to the tears that I shed while listening to Speak Now and the signature red lip, which I, I'm still not over. This is so pretty. I love the way the look turned out. I feel super cute. Please let me know what your top five songs on Speak Now are. That was my favorite thing about the last video I posted of Lover is you all told me your top five and you guys have chef's kiss, immaculate taste. Those top fives did not come to play and I absolutely love that. So please let me know about Speak Now. I also, I wanna address right now, I just wanna address before I get the comment because I, I'm a Swifty so I know you Swifties are gonna be like, where's Back to December on the list? Back to December is number six, okay? That was almost in the top five. And it was really hard for me not to put it in the top five, but I needed Enchanted to be in there just because of my teenage girl experience and everything, so. Yeah, I hope you liked this video. Let me know what Taylor Swift era I should do next. Be sure to leave me a comment with your favorite song. I can't stop looking at myself. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. I'm like looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, I feel so cute. Look at this little hairstyle. Should I do a video of hairstyles for thin hair? I don't know if I have enough of them, but maybe someday I will I will gather some and we'll do it. Anyways, I'm getting off on a tangent. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will have another video out before the end of the week. So I can't wait to see you there. And and check out my description box for all the makeup on my face today. Also in my description box, I will have all of my social justice links, so please click on those if you haven't yet. And I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!